Hello everyone and welcome back to my JNSQ series in Kerbal Space Program 1.7.3. In this episode, we actually got the contract that I was looking for. Uh, we've got explore the moon, plant a flag on the moon. Well, that's another way of saying landing on the moon with a Kerbal. A walk on the surface of the moon. I'm, I'm impressed that that was a separate thing. Okay. Uh, so yeah, we will pick that up and we will attempt to do it. Uh, we've got a lot of rescue contracts. You can see all six of these. That's a lot. Um... So, first of all, I'm gonna pick the ones that aren't doubled up. So, Urbro, uh, that one's doubled. Uh, Patberry, gotta get Patberry. So, that's uh, from Orbit of the Moon. Urcus uh, is doubled, but uh, lots of money. Um, that's Orbit of the Moon. It says Low Moon Orbit, so I don't know why they're paying us so much. It must be an interesting orbit. Okay, uh, well, we might as well pick that up too, because it's worthwhile. Uh, maybe we'll find out why it's doubled up. Maybe we won't, I don't know. So, let me proceed to build the moon lander. We've got a capsule that can get a Kerbal over to the moon, into orbit around the moon, but we don't have a moon lander. And I already took a look at two parts that I was intending to use, and you can see the problem here. So this is the Hermes personal re-entry capsule and of course the docking port on the pod that we already have matches up with this bell docking port but I didn't realize how big this bell docking port is. So we have a couple of options. We could uh, tuck it. No, we can't. So we have one option. At least this doesn't have a built-in heat shield or anything. Basically this is our only option, isn't it? Uh, unless we get the Kerbal to EVA out. I don't know. Maybe we'll just have an EVA transfer between the two vehicles. That might be for the best. But uh, we'll have to make sure that the EVA pack has enough of whatever propellant it needs. Yeah, and uh, nitrogen is depleted quite a lot on EVAing, so we might want to pack some extra nitrogen. Anyway, let me build it out. I, I think maybe we'll just have the Kerbal EVA between them and skip the so so much for needing the docking port unless we wanted a rescue or something maybe maybe it'd still allow for a rescue opportunity but this is obviously way too big okay so this is what I've got assuming that the Kerbal is going to EVA between the two vessels and this only has one Kerbal uh, so only one will make the landing initially and that's for the best Risking fewer Kerbals is good, but we need a controller because we're going to send this uncrewed over there first. And it's got some scientific instruments here. It's got four of the Communitron 16 antennae. Uh, it's the Hermes personal re-entry capsule, the smaller one. And no heat shield, and we're using a standard 1.25 meter tank, so there's just the FLT200, so it doesn't have the more beneficial fuel to dry mass ratio, it's just got the regular one. Uh, landing legs, solar panels, and we were using this engine, uh, ba bottle, bottle, uh, liquid engine, and that's because it gets a little bit better uh, ISP, 319. It's got 11 kilonewtons, which is more than enough for the surface of the moon. Right now we're tuned to the moon, moon vacuum, 2.83 thrust to weight ratio, and so that's good, and it's only a cost of 200, which is Nice, uh, I mean the Decker was another option, but uh, it costs more, has way too much thrust and all that business, and it's heavier. This looks the part by the way, this basically is the Lunar Module Descent Engine, at least I recognize it as that shape, or it could be the Ascent Engine. It look a lot, I, mean, I think the Ascent Engine, maybe. Anyway, uh, so yeah, it is an engine that is appropriate for this job, and... In any case, it's sort of like an AG10 derivative kind of thing. Um, but yeah, we've got a backup propulsion system with uh, four ant engines. It's possible... Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm looking at the ant engines. This has 3.88 thrust to weight ratio. I mean, it makes sense that uh, they have roughly close thrust to weight ratio because they're interchangeable systems just in case the main engine fails. Uh, the backup system can work, but uh, probably not to make the full landing. Um, well, they, they, they probably could, actually. It's, uh, it's tighter with the... Well, it's about the same delta V, either way. <laughs> so, anyway, 
uh, yep, backup system. The backup system actually costs more than the single engine, incidentally. Every, uh, everything is on high quality. So, yeah. And we've got food, water, and oxygen, of course. Uh, we've got 30 days worth, just like the pod, just in case. And I've also packed extra nitrogen here for the EVAs. Now, we don't have a ladder. And I'm a little bit worried about this. I don't know what the power of the jetpacks or EVA packs is with Kerbalism. So, but we, we haven't gotten the science to unlock anything else. There's... Anyway, you'll have to trust me on that. We haven't got the science to unlock anything else, so... Hopefully, the thruster packs are not gonna leave a Kerbal stranded on the surface. Hopefully. But, on the bright side, if it does leave a Kerbal stranded on the surface, then the Kerbal will be able to get some science to hopefully unlock the ladders so that we can send a rescue mission. Hopefully. Anyway, uh, though whether the Kerbal will be able to transmit that back in time, I don't know. <laughs> oh, troubles. So, yeah, these, these antennae are not great for tra transmitting stuff. Maybe I'll add a bonus antenna or two. A high gain one. Putting it back here will sort of be imbalancing. Nah, we'll, we'll try it like this. We'll see what happens. Okay, here we go. Let's see what goes wrong. Throttle up, SAS is on, and... Alright, ignition, and launch. We've still got this roll. Last time it settled out. I don't know if this is like nominal nominal. <laughs> this is not what they meant by roll program. It does settle out as we get faster and encounter more drag. It's almost certainly the placement of the SRBs, but I tried I mean they're in eight-way symmetry. So Okay, there we go. Separation. Very good. Clean. No fuss. Okay, pretty nice trajectory so far. And separation, ignition, and, you know, random explosion. It's fine. I'm a little bit worried about these fairings and the landing legs, but... Hopefully it'll be all right. Okay, and that's that. Uh, that's not good enough. That's good enough. All right. Okay. Well, we have a solution. Uh, we should probably just orient to the sun for now, as we are waiting. Okay, we should be go for comms over the maneuver point. Uh, Right now, we're connecting through the rude helipad, and we have a satellite overhead, Needsat 2A, which should be in range through the rest of the burn. So, okay, node, and ignition. Nice colors in this image. This would be a good time to drop the HUD and just take a look at that. Ah, uh, the, the sort of redness that we saw before on the landscape has passed, though. That's a heck of an inclination, though. We're gonna have to do a rendezvous after all. It is ending with that inclination. Okay. I think I'll do a correction, just so that we don't have the inclination. I sure hope these guys have a whole bunch of ignitions, right? Yeah, 13 more left. Okay, so that should be fine. 
I think we could probably pick up a Kerbal around the moon somewhere. But that's Patberry's pod. Not the most convenient position. Urka's scrap is pretty convenient. Well, okay, I take it back. That's really low. <laughs> I think Urka's scrap might accidentally bump into something on the moon at that level. I think he was expecting the stock moon altitudes. The way it is there, with things scaled up, it might bump into something. Okay, well, we'll use Urka's scrap as a reference point, at least. Okay, ignition on the correction burn. Okay, that is a safe periapsis. A little bit off on the inclination, but that's alright. Go back to sundown, and we proceed. Hey, wait, 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 it didn't settle down on sundown. Focus. Alright, now we go. Communication remains good. We expect it to be good at periapsis. I thought about having a rescued Kerbal do the landing, but I think we'll just do it legit and send the Kerbal. We'll go through the process properly, if you will. Okay, making orbit. Okay, uh, we'll do one more burn at periapsis. Uh, no, we'll leave it here for now. We'll have to do a rendezvous and everything. So, I expect that this will handle the rendezvous burns. We will see. Okay, for now though, everything seems to be nominal. We see some mountains there. And I'll leave this be, and we are going to launch a Kerbal. Okay folks, here we go. I've decided to put Jeb in the pod because this couldn't get any riskier than having Jeb do the first landing. Well, anyway, here we go. Ignition and launch. And standard roll program. We'll call this a nominal roll situation now. I guess this is just how this rocket is. Okay, very good. Everything has settled down here. We are past the speed of sound. Okay, holding for booster separation and separate. All good. Okay, getting ready for separation here. And separation. And standard explosion. Very nominal. No worries. I've been really bad at keeping the orbit in check with this stage. Trying here, I'm trying. Well, we'll shut down. There's a chance that we can just transfer directly. Let me get the antennae out. Once uh, Jeb is in the lander, we'll need to control this remotely. Okay. Well, let's see. Moon is there. I mean, well, we could just tra transfer now, let's see. Yeah, alright, let's go. Uh, node. Throttle up. Probably needs a mid-course adjustment like the other one, though. Electric charge with the tiny pint panel seems fine. So, I guess I won't drop this shroud yet. Oh, we've got one engine failure, but we tilted the engines so that that's not a problem. Uh, it's gonna be an extended burn time for this one though, and we're at 2 minutes and 40 seconds. 
we've got two minutes of earned time with just one engine. So we better not be throttling down much. We can use the mod propellant for finer tuning of the trajectory. Probably for the mid course adjustment too. Okay, it's getting away from us. Alright, so shut down. And let me just take a look at what's going on. That's actually a good enough start right there. We'll do the mid course adjustment. Hello, I want to do a mid course adjustment, please. Oh no. Oh, wait. Uh, it sort of let a node happen there. I don't know why it's letting me make one here, but not back there where I want one. Here we go. So, we want to rendezvous with landing pod 1, obviously. That looks okay for now. And certainly doable with the RCS. We're currently recharging. So, okay. On to the mid-course adjustment. Data transmitter on need set to A is gone for good. Our satellites already, commsat's already dying. We may need like a shuttle to get Kerbals out there to repair satellites or something. I mean, it's cheaper than launching new ones. Well, as long as the shuttle's reusable. Okay, that should be fine, and we'll get a little bit more sunlight on that one panel. No, not Minmus. Why am I focusing on Minmus? Okay, yes, that seems fine. We should be able to combine our capture into orbit with an inclination fix. Uh, we really need to do a big burn with the stage that we've got right now, because we've only got the one engine, but 100 meters per second. Well, we'll see. I mean, obviously the stage can do it, it's just a matter of whether the engine lasts. Just got regular reliability after all. Reaction wheel on Needsat 2 is gone for good. That's uh, not so easy to replace. Uh, oh, coronal mass ejection time. So let's uh, have our butt end towards the sun temporarily, but I don't know. Maybe we, this is a good time to get the panels out then. So yeah, the shroud needs to go off. Oh, the panels are probably facing the right... No, they're facing the right way. Good. But they're taking radiation damage. Hmm. Almost tempted to keep only two out and two in. Just in case. But I think it'll be alright for our short mission. Oh, it rotated so that it's no longer butt end towards the sun. Shoot. Jab may get a bit of a radiation dose here. Let's see how he's doing. 4% um, radiation, 3% stress. So I checked on the ladders. Um, we could get rungs with 90, but that's not good enough because the engine at the bottom of the lander is pretty long. So... If we can't use the EV packet, take unlocking the R&D building and getting a science that requires 160. So 250 altogether because we need the 90 as a precursor in order to get ladders. I mean, to get ladders, really. Something needs to be done about that in the tech tree. Ladders are not that complicated. The color of the HUD... I wonder if there's a way of changing that, because on the surface it's tough to look at this particular color.
Okay, node. I hope it's counting the fact that we only have one engine. And ignition. We've captured. Oh, 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 no, off, 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 ah. Um, let me go prograde. We can use the RCS to fix this. But maybe I don't want that encounter. Maybe I do, though. I think I do. We've got enough mob propellants. We've got a lot of mob propellants, actually. Okay, that'll be good enough. I don't I don't know if we still got coronal mass ejection going on, but that's weird. Is doesn't the electric charge diminish just with the Kerbal in? Why why is it not the diminishing now? I'm missing something, I feel like. This is weird. I didn't update any mods. Hmm. But even on the nighttime side it didn't seem like the electric charge was going down. Okay, target negative relative velocity. This will probably be it for this stage. We've only got 13 seconds of earn time left. Well, that's the stage time. We could milk a few more seconds out of it. Let's see. This engine has 57 seconds left, actually. Oh, there's our guy, Ignition. Okay, now I'll have to do... Let's separate off that stage. Activate these thrusters. But we'll do the rest of the rendezvous with RCS. Okay, retro positioning. RCS, Retro. Okay, that's pretty good. Alright, um, let's make sure that this is in a sun up orientation, that's right. So that keeps recharging. Okay, Jeb EVA. So it's mop propellant, and we'll have a limited amount of that, so we have to watch out. Just those five units, really. We don't have additional mop propellant over there. Should probably pack some on the lander next time. I think the door side is on the other underside here. Hatch side, I should say. Board. Okay, so Jeb is in. 4.88 mod propellant left there. Okay, so obviously we will want to land on the brighter side. Oh, the moon looks a little bit grayer here than in, well, around here. But um, yeah, anywhere will do for planting a flag. It didn't specify any particular place. Walk on the surface of the moon, yeah. Okay, so the lines back for communication are like that. So probably we want to land around here-ish. Looks flat enough so that we're not going to have any problems. We've got some burn time with these, so I'm going to give it a little puff to uh, bring our orbit down a bit. Also get away from the other pod. Okay, that'll do. We'll have it initiate our descent and also that will allow the stage to impact the moon. Consumables look fine. Well, electric charge is being consumed here on the nighttime side. 
So that's nominal. Okay, right around here we'll do an initial descent burn. And we're aiming to land around here-ish. All right, we'll retain the stage though. Pretty bumpy around here. I want to expedite staging a little bit. Maybe this is a better view. I was thinking maybe we should start earlier, but this is okay. Five minutes to that point. Six minutes. We should have more than that kind of time. All right, right above this crater. The rest of it should be reasonably level. Okay. Yeah, our descent speed is not too bad. It's not that level, though. Got to watch out. Okay, ignition. And separation. Oh, and separation. Burn time is pretty long on this. But we're doing, doing a pretty good job of cutting our speed. Get gear down. Landing gear didn't seem to get hurt by the fairings, that's good. Total uh, rated burn time is 22 minutes, so this is a high quality engine. Okay, looking good. Almost on final descent here, killing all that surface horizontal, turning off Smart ASS and going to SAS instead. Okay, that should be pretty good on the surface horizontal speed. Uh, well, don't go up though, don't go up. So the glare is serious. Whoop, whoop, whoop. I drifted a little bit. Jeb is still a one star. Pretty calm descent. Using a lot of fuel, but should be okay. It's nice to have fully throttling engines. Oop. Well, okay, that should be good enough. All right, we've landed very neatly. Okay, well, so um, let's do some science. Um, uh, well, we got the solar panels out. Yes, yeah, start. It's running. Ten minutes. Ah, oh, come on. We want to check the moon's atmosphere. Should be doable. I guess we've already done the radiation scan and the temperature scan in this biome. That sucks. But uh, we shouldn't have had a crew report before. So that's running. I guess we have to leave Jeb in the pod for the crew report. That would make sense. Okay, we got that. And it was already transmitted. Oh, it's rocking back and forth a little bit. That's worrying. But it's time for Jeb to EVA and for us to find out whether he can get back in afterwards. I mean, EVA report. We'll do it from right up there. Can we actually get the surface sample from up there? Apparently so. Does this actually count as walking on... Yeah, actually it counts as walking on the surface of the moon, but we can't plant the flag like this. Interesting. Yep, it doesn't have the plant a flag option. Oh, I, I wonder, does that have to be a special unlock on one of the buildings? Oh gosh, I forgot. It might be. 
It'd be really sad if we risk Jeb and don't even... Oh, there's no mod propellant in him. Why doesn't he have not... Ooh, it almost got me. What? He had mod propellant. Right? He had 4.88 mod propellant. We didn't turn on the RCS. Where did the mod propellant go? Ah. Uh, well, we can't plant a flag this time, folks. Because we wouldn't be able to get him back into the pod. I don't think climbing would work. But I guess this is going to be... But how is he going to get to the other pod? Oh my god. Yeah. Hmm. Well, it'd be easier to rescue him from from orbit than... I don't know how... He, no, it'd be easier to rescue him on the surface. Because he could walk over to it, but it'll need the ladder. This has gotten a whole lot more complicated. Just because the mob propellant disappeared and I don't know where it went. I'm I'm gonna get your input on this, I think. This this is a good time to get viewer input. We have this situation. Otherwise we could rescue him. He's got twenty six days before he runs out of food. And to rescue him, I would suppose that we would have to land a pod here so that Jeb could walk to it. And it'd have to have a ladder. Cause otherwise I don't know how he gets mob propellants to climb up into it. Well, there's a situation. I'll get your thoughts. This is a little bit complicated. I was not expecting this. So I should have just put mob propellant in the pod to begin with. We have enough to launch from the surface to get back to orbit. That's fine. Got enough delta V for that. So that's not a problem. Science-wise, we, we don't really have a whole lot of science yet. We certainly need a lot more to even unlock ladders. But we... yeah. Uh, if we get the rungs, I could possibly create a sort of... Um, structural part that extends down here that has the rungs on it. So we could probably make do with just 90 science if we need to rescue him. And so we'll get the 90 science, we'll get the rungs, and recreate a pod like this, but with the rungs on. And then... Yeah, we'll have to land it close to this, obviously. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.